talk a little bit about what you know, if you can, uh, and, and what you expect from Jose Bautista. Well, Dean, to me, it's it's the same uh, circumstance that, that I've uh, been hearing about for a while and, and, and believe strongly that Bautista is just simply not inclined to sign the qualifying offer at $17.2 million. Uh, again, that's my understanding that from his camp, he is leaning toward turning that down. I don't know that it's official in his mind, but I think it's very likely. Of course, one thing the agents can do is that they can gauge interest once the World Series is over to make a, a better informed decision. So I'm sure um, he'll know even more in the next few days. But to me, guys, Jose Bautista, by the numbers, except the qualifying offer wouldn't necessarily be the worst plan. But we, we know his pride. We know his self-belief, which have made him a great player, and I respect that wholeheartedly. To me, I think Bautista does not want to accept that qualifying offer. I think he wants to have a multi-year deal. I think it's, it's again, partially pride, partially uh, maybe he feels like he's got something to prove now. So uh, Boston, I think, would make some sense. I'd be interested, though, if he's ready to be a DH because uh, they've got a guy by the name of Mookie Betts who's pretty spectacular unless they decide to trade Jackie Bradley Jr. for pitching, which is possible. Uh, and that they, they could then move Betts to center and play Bautista in right. But at this moment, guys, there's no there's no outfield spot in right field for Jose Bautista in Boston. He'd have to be a DH, but if, he, if he's comfortable with that role, uh, then maybe he goes there and all of a sudden uh, then per- perhaps that's not a place that Encarnacion goes. So, uh, so I, I do think there's a fair chance that the Red Sox wind up with, a, with one former Blue Jay. I'm just not entirely sure yet who that's going to be. Uh, if you could rank uh, three teams where Edwin potentially could go, John, uh, who would be the favorite and one of the other ones would be right behind them? Uh, I think for Edwin, I think Boston is still in the mix. Uh, I look at the Houston Astros uh, as as being, I think, strongly in the mix, and I think you'd have to say the Yankees because they just they need some more pop. So I, I think those are the teams that to me make the most sense because and the Yankees know. Listen, hey, that that's a swing player. That is uh, to borrow the hockey expression, a four pointer. If you're able to do that, uh, it certainly takes the takes that. Uh, benefit away from a rival and then helps you. So I think Boston, the Yankees, the Astros in in some order are, are probably the teams that uh, that I look at as saying they have the strongest chance uh, to get Encarnacion. You didn't mention the Jays, John. Yeah. Uh well, I was sort of thinking about other teams, but I, I still, so I I still think it's possible the Jays are in the mix, but I, I also believe um, th- this team, guys, I just I cannot wait to, to talk about this all winter with you because yeah. there are just so many different aspects, so many things at work. What does Mark Shapiro want to do? What does Ross Atkins want to do? What does ownership want to do? I, I still think there's a there's a, a fair chance that, that Encarnacion winds up back in Toronto. And again, I, I think with the qualifying offer for, for Bautista, I don't think it's his plan at all to accept it. I still think, though, Seventeen point two million dollars is not a uh, not a small sum of money, and I think uh, uh, Bautista didn't come off a great year. I think he should give real thought to accepting it, but uh, he's a proud guy, and I think that frankly, at this point in time, he probably is leaning towards uh, the open market.